hello once again you're welcome to my youtube channel it's a channel about chemistry it's all about chemistry if you're just joining us please do uh, or you've not subscribed before just press that subscription button near you and press the notification bell so that anytime any new content is posted you'll be notified uh, for my returning subscribers please thank you for returning please keep returning today our topic will be on mixtures okay let's get started over the horizon you're yeah, welcome back once again like i said our topic is going to be on mixtures now we are not mixture is not something that is we are unfamiliar with everything everybody knows about mixing things mixing things together we mix so many things together we mix paint together we mix salt and water together we mix sugar and water together we mix if we want to make our tea in the morning we mix uh, our beverage and our milk with water you know so everybody knows about mixing it's an, it's an everyday occurrence even when we are making our soup we mix don't we yeah though that one has to do with chemical change yeah but the mixture we are going to talk about today is all about physical change mixture that has to do with physical change now a mixture like last topic we talked about compound compound and mixture somehow they they kind of synchronize each other they synchronize each other you as you're talking it, uh, most times you have to compare compound and their mixtures because somehow they are the opposite of each other so, and in chemistry, a mixture is a combination of different constituents which can be separated by different, but sorry, by physical means. You know, a combination of different constituents which can be separated by physical means. You've seen that there's a difference between mixture and compound. Okay, compound is a chemical combination, chemical, but mixture that it has nothing about chemical in it it's just a combination of different constituents which can be separated by physical means that you can you just mix anything without having to apply heat to it so that you can easily be so that mixture can easily be separated okay now we have some examples of mixtures we have air uh, we have soil it's a mixture we have urine yeah it's a mixture we have palm wine it's a mixture you know don't go and say uh is it not the palm wine they tap uh, from up there and you know how do, how is it a mixture it's a mixture it's a mixture we have coca-cola coca-cola drink it is a mixture we have milk milk itself is a mixture we have sea water we have blood the blood in our body we have crude oil and so many other mixtures that we have, that we have, we do not mention here. Now, when we just like I told you, mixture and compound somehow they go together. You know, you some you hardly talk of one without having to refer to the other, and that is why we we cannot talk of mixture without having to compare it with compounds, so that you know the difference between both of them because both of them are mixtures. But one has to do with chemical. Make one one is a chemical mixture, and the other one is just a physical mixture. So to compare a mixture and a compound, a mixture may be homogeneous or heterogeneous. For a mixture, it can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. That is, it means homogeneous means it can be uniform. That's after mixing, you will not be able to differentiate between the constituents that made up that mixture. That it may be uniform, 
heterogeneous is that it's not uniform. Uh, meanwhile, compound is always, always homogeneous because an entirely new substance is formed in it. So it is always homogeneous. You cannot differentiate by staring at that compound. You cannot say this is what was used in making it up. For example, red mercury 2 oxide was made up of ordinary mercury, which is black, and water. But when they come together, you find out that it is a sorry, it was made up of ordinary mercury and oxygen. Please, black oxygen, black mercury and oxygen. But when he has been mixed, it now becomes the red mercury 2 oxide. Then the consequences are not chemically bound together in mixture. They are not chemically bound. That, means, that is why you can easily separate them by physical means. But in compound, they are chemically bound together. They cannot be separated by physical means. Okay? If you want to separate, if you are really intent on separating compounds, you must involve heat. For example, in separating mercury, red mercury to oxide, you apply heat. And when you apply that heat to that, when you heat it up, for, it, for you to know the substances that made up that mercury 2 oxide, to confirm the substances that made up that mercury 2 oxide, you use a glowing splinter as the steam is coming up, up coming up as you, as, as you, as you have mixed it, air, a kind of air is coming up, steam, I will call it steam, fumes, fumes. You now use your that glowing splinter, place it in the direction of it, and if it glows, it will rekindle the glowing splinter. They know that as oxygen. And then you see that what is left after the whole heating process is done, what is left there is a black residue, which is which is the mercury that made up that that uh, compound mercury two oxide. So it cannot be separated by physical means except you apply chemical means. That's for compound. From the, from the third one, the constituents can be added together in any ratio by mass in mixture. You, you can just add any ratio you want, you know, like add any quantity you want. But in compound, they must be added in a fixed ratio. And that is why compound has a chemical formula. You know, in the mixture, you can just add them anyhow. But in compound, they must be added in a fixed ratio. The constituent will be added in a fixed ratio by mass. Then the last but not the least, the properties of a mixture are the sum of its individual constituents. Why the properties of a compound differ entirely from those of its component elements? Yes, in a mixture, let's say you're adding salt and water together. After adding it, the mixture that is formed will still be, it will still retain the properties of salt and it will still retain the properties of water. If you place a cup of blue cobalt paper inside that mixture, it will surely turn it pink because water, because of the water that is present inside it. Okay? So to further explain what I just discussed on mixture, I'm going to do a, just a little um, a practical experiment so you will be able to grasp it better. So I'm going to use salt and water. I'm going to use to mix five millimeter each two spoons of salt each contains five milliliter of salt. This is 10 milliliter of salt. 10 milliliter. Then I add 150 milliliter of water. Then I mix it. I mix it up. This is a homogeneous mixture. It's a homogeneous mixture of salt and water. Now, just like they said, the constituents of the mixture is the the, the mixture is the sum of the constituents of, of it. That means that this mixture, the total is 160 milliliter. 
because it contains 10 ml of salt and 150 ml of water. If you measure it on a weighing scale, you find out that it is exactly it, just exactly the sum, no addition, no subtraction. Okay, and it still retains the properties of salt and the properties of water. Sodium chloride was used. This mixture will still retain the properties of sodium chloride, it still retains the properties of water. If you place a blue cobalt pepper inside it to check for water, it will turn pink. That is one test for water. So it still retains it. So with this, we have come to the end of the topic. If you are just joining us, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed the topic, do press the like button. Give me a thumbs up by pressing the like button. And please leave your comment in the comment section. I would really appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. See you.